Hello everyone and welcome back to local chat. Sorry that we didn't have an episode last week, but in fact we are back this week uh, for episode 41. Still kept the counter going. Uh, it is October 14th, 2021. Joining me today, as usual, is the one and only Ian Gibson. That's right. Uh, again, apologies for last week. We wanted to have an episode, but Will really wanted to just keep streaming RimWorld 24-7. But we're back, and we've got plenty of great stuff for you, including Kyle. How's it going? Hey, it's going pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, ah. Uh, I thought about watching that show again, but I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's it worth watching. It holds up 100%. <laughs> I haven't seen... There's two new seasons new seasons yeah i haven't seen yeah. either of those i watched a little bit of the f the fatwa they're good is that what it is oh, season yes. and then oh, I, I didn't oh. watch anything else after that but we're I, not what, what well let's keep wanna? talking about you want to so keep I, talking about I, it? I went back and watched the recent the latest two seasons last year i think it was and maggie was like, what is this stupid show blah 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 and then by the time that i finished <laughs> she started watching the whole thing <laughs> So I kind of rewatched it with her. Hundred percent, it holds up. Like the I believe the first episode is the pants tent, which is hilarious. Like it's just it's an incredible show from day one. Go watch Curb Your Enthusiasm. I I like the caught in the throat. That that bit is very good. So many good bits. They just released a new trailer for the new season. Oh man, I'm excited. Yeah, I should do that. I watched through Seinfeld again very recently. So I feel like that's a good continuation. You're like, the, you're like the eighth person who's told me that. And I know it's because it just went on Netflix, but it's just so easy to rewatch. I literally yeah. just moved it to like the third season and just pressed play. And I was like, I'm just going to watch from here. I um, yeah. I, I watch it once a year usually um, just because uh, my only problem with it, though, is there are no 1080p four by three versions of that show. They are all... Yeah zoomed in 16.9 and it annoys me because you don't miss any jokes because they were actually pretty good at it but you miss periphery information and there's some um, there's some like there's a screenshot going around on twitter when it when it came back on netflix recently about how there's like a scene where george is pointing at a pothole or a manhole cover and because of the crop the manhole cover is not in the shot anymore and it's just like what yeah you know because for the longest time i assumed they they widened it out I didn't realize they that's had zoomed rare. in. Um, I believe they, the I believe the wire did that. Actually, so they, I, go ahead. They go. did that on uh, TBS when TBS had. Or I don't know if they still have rights oh. to broadcast mm. it, but they they widened it out there. And then there was another. You guys were talking about tweets. It was like how to scare a streaming service, and it was like showing them four by three instead of sixteen by nine. <laughs> yeah. it's just like <laughs> it's even uh, um, even when I'm searching for old video game stuff for uh for work the thumbs on youtube search will still be 69 stretched and it won't yeah. be until you click into the video that it snaps to four by three which is very yeah. annoying because i'm like when i first did it i was like oh none of these people played this nes game in four by three so i um, i'm yeah. checking right now i have seasons one through nine that in college me and my friends ripped off of all the dvd sets using handbrake so mm -hmm. I think those are all in, let me double check. They're probably what? 720 by 480. Four by three? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's 480, but it's, yeah. it's original. Aspect, I wonder if so. that's worth yeah. having. It's, it's, it's also funny uh, in the 1080p versions of Seinfeld to see what, <laughs> what they were actually focused on. Like later <laughs> seasons, a lot of the shots are yeah. focused on the cereal boxes behind them and not yeah. on the characters in front. And it's like... Yeah. You, a the camera guy was working fast but b when it was on the tv back then you didn't notice that didn't couldn't matter. tell yeah um but now my favorite like, aspect ratio yeah no, my favorite didn't. aspect ratio thing is when somebody okay the original format is widescreen and then they made a four by three cut of it by having black bars on the top and bottom and then okay. later they show that four by three cut on 16 by 9 so it's stretched out and it's just oh it's been twice walked <laughs> and it's the best i um this is the last thing i'll say um we got a copy of the great escape i think it wasn't blu-ray because i'm pretty sure it wasn't blu-ray it was the dvd release of the great escape and they forgot to trim 
the edges of the cut so pretty much every shot like when uh steve mcqueen is bouncing the ball in his prison cell it was just the prison cell and then the clear boards of the set holding up the set with the sound guy behind it <laughs> for like the entire movie because they, they never trimmed they just scanned the original negatives and just put it up uh that's phenomenal and i was like Classic how did Hollywood. that make it make it through but <laughs> it did anyways folks we're not here to talk about four by three dvds and blu-rays and oh, i thought about buying vhs but, we but that's that's something we else were, um we're here to talk H about video games your, fix your Damn compression already. <laughs> you fix it's, it. They're putting they're putting out 4K versions now, like 4K HDR or or I think it's Dolby uh, Dolby Vision, but they haven't fixed the compression, so it's 4K Dolby Vision with just horrible compression artifacts on it, and it's infuriating. Anyways, I'm sorry. You yeah, probably change time. Uh, yeah, I downloaded a 4K YouTube video, and <laughs> it was clearly 4K, but the screen. The video game they screen capped was compression all over it. I was like, oh, just because God. you're recording in 4K doesn't mean what you're recording yeah. is in 4K. Folks, video games, we're here to talk about uh. them. Um, I'll go first. Since I wasn't here last week, I heard you bashing me about RimWorld. I talk about it every week. Tell uh, me what's new. Tell me if there's something new or exciting. Otherwise, I'm going to be mean and say, who, who gives a honky? You know, I would talk about it, but I didn't play it this week. I played a little bit That's today. Awesome. Honestly, um, surprising. But I've been very busy playing Far Cry 6. Listen. Will, I need to know, we, we have talked about this. Why did you buy this game? I thought we were all in agreement here that it did not look good and it did not look like it was worth it. Listen, it just it just looked average to me. It just looked yeah. It, it, it looked too much like yep, that's a Far Cry game. It it it's like it, it feels like there's no graphical improvements, no gameplay improvements, no story improvements, and it's just like average at best. What's wh what did you do, Will? What did you do? What have Listen, you done? <laughs> I've played every Far Cry game since three, and not the shitty one. Uh, so that, I, you played that, five. I mean, primal, you played five. No, I mean the non-main line. I haven't played Primal or uh, the Fallout one. I did play Blood, Blood Cry, Blood Hound. Blood or, Dragon? Blood Dragon, there we go. Yeah. Um, listen, this game would be great if it was your first Far Cry game. If you were a college student or whatever and you never played a Far Cry game, you can get this game, it's great. It's the essence of Far Cry. It's got a lot of cool upgrades. Story's okay. It looks pretty good on the Series X I've been playing it on. But this is not my first Far Cry. This is my two, three, four, five, six, six. fifth Far Cry. I six. Oh, um, okay, gotcha, gotcha. It's it's just so much the same video game. <laughs> I know, but somehow worse. Like it it's 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 so. Like there's a wingsuit and parachute, and in the parachute, I was like, "Oh, this parachute should feel like Warzone." It does not feel like Warzone at all. Uh, the wingsuit should feel like uh, the game with the wingsuit recently. It should feel like that. It does not feel like that at all. The wingsuit, I f in the in the airplane, I feel like I'm going two miles an hour when I slow down, and they like just <laughs> did that to be stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's they, like that's like Battlefield planes recently where they're like, we're not really going to give you physics. It's more just like a weird vehicle. I you're you're kind of hovering around in. And they also in this game, they added uh, this is the worst part. And it sounds cool, but I hate it now. They added a crafting system and I don't care. I, it about crafting things in video games. I'm not a stats guy. And I just don't care. Um, do they? Do they have? Um, I forget what the technical term is for it. But do enemies have uh, health bars above their heads, or is it just like you shoot them? Yeah, up several they have times like the pipped down. out health bars, really, which don't really make don't sense don't sometimes. Like there, there's like guys who have three pips above their heads, and I kill them yeah. in one shot. And there's a guy with one, and it goes down halfway because he's a higher level. I'm like, wh what? I, I don't know why that's become such a thing that everybody, all developer, not all developers, but a lot of developers seem to just think is default. 
I, I want to go back to the time where it was like, you could shoot someone and they would, I think Far Cry 2 had this and probably Far Cry 3, but like they would just react to getting shot in the shoulder and then you'd yeah. shoot them in the head and they die. And it was like, it was more realistic. And I, I kind of thought that they were going for that. The, yeah, the it's of, just like, yeah, know. it's so weird. And so back to, back to the crafting stuff, it's like enemies don't drop weapons anymore. You can't just go pick up a weapon. You have to acquire. What? You have to acquire a new weapon from like a cash box. It'll give you a, a new weapon. And then, so this is the one thing. The one thing I like that they did is that any time you can go into the menu to your loadout and change your loadout. You can change okay, weapons great. in the menu. You can change mods in the menu. Like, also, another thing. I, I know people love this, but I don't like. Really, don't like modding weapons that much. I like it a little it's gotta bit. Be, it it's got to be, be worthwhile. Yeah, It's got to be worthwhile. But there's like 15 yeah. levels of suppressors. And, and the other thing with suppressors, you shoot them too much, they glow and they stop working as a suppressor until they cool down, which is another okay, stupid that's, thing. That's actually, I kind of, I you, know, you got to bake that into the rest of the game, but that's that could be cool. That could be a cool system. Yeah, but uh, it just, just doesn't feel good. It feels like, feels like uh, it's reacting to me like five seconds after i try to do something uh mm -hmm. in the game and then yeah i just don't know it's it's oh the other thing when you go in for some reason when you go into the main base on this first island i'm on it goes to third person because why not why not just what? go to third person <laughs> is that the first time in far cry history that it's i'm been pretty sure third person why is it what? i play it goes third. It's so weird. Also, you have an ultimate That's, now. Okay, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like, Far Cry has embraced first person so much. Like, if you think about all their cutscenes, they, like, they make it, like, very visceral first person. Like, they have yeah. embraced first person and been like, you are this character. Why would they ever make the decision to just randomly pull you out to third person? That is against their own design ethos. That's That's insane. What was, are they doing? Also, I don't know if this is a marketing thing, but uh, for some reason, I was convinced you played as Giancarlo Esposito's son. But you, you do. I, I no, you don't. I believe you do. Yeah, that's not I, you. I no. thought that it was it was his daughter, or like like no, they wanted it to be a female character. You're completely like different. You you're a different person. What? Yes, that's why I'm so confused. Unless that's, that's a good some story. Sort of, unless it's some that's sort of reveal whole, later on. The whole the whole teaser, like the original teaser with the grenade, where he's like, it's like the girl, and he's standing behind her talking about the people on the streets. That's yeah. like. His daughter. Yeah. I but thought so, that was the main character. The, so in the beginning, there's like that, you know, that scene with the boat where the kid's trying to escape and Giancarlo Esposito comes yeah. on the boat. The yeah. girl in there is who, or guy, you can be a girl guy, is the person you're playing as, not the Diego, the son. So No, no. Wait. Isn't that his No, kid, so his son is the one he gets on the boat. But the, but the people, there's a lady and a older lady that the, son is hiding behind you're playing that person who they're yeah, hiding behind so unless unless later in the game you become diego that could be a thing i have no idea but i'm glad you guys are just as confused because i thought i like I thought the game point. and it That's showed cool. the kid young and i was like oh are they gonna do like a time thing and then i'm playing as the son no yeah this no. is real confusing Ugh. um yeah so i like i just want to be clear I cannot wait to play this game when it's on Game Pass. Yeah. Like, that's what this game should be. And it just, you know, like Kyle already said, it did not look interesting. It didn't look like they were doing anything new. The only thing that was remotely interesting to me was the story. And it sounds like they're not even doing that right by not having you play. I, I was going to say, son. Giancarlo Esposito is two for two in, like, useless video game <laughs> yeah. ports of having him be in them. Because he was in Destiny. And no one remembers that. Um, or he was in, wow. at least in the trailer or whatever. But he's just, I don't know. He's great. Yeah. He's so good. He's such a good actor. But like, they just, they either underutilize him or push him so much that he's uninteresting. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. There's, it's, it's weird because it's a game that has so much to do, but I feel like I have nothing to do. Like, I, it wants to be just cause so badly, but it's not. And I just, the, the other thing they did add, uh, I'll just say this before I move on. Uh, they added 
I don't know if this was in five. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, but you can holster your weapon and like walk around guards and stuff. So God, like, I, sorry, I just remembered they delayed this game by yeah. like a pretty substantial amount because of that whole thing where Ubisoft said, you know what, we're going to slow down a little bit. We're going to look at our games. We're going to try and make them better and more unique and not just push them out. And it sounds like they did almost nothing with this other than add in unwanted changes. Maybe it was even more ununique. <laughs> and they were like, just, well, I can bring this up to a new level of... Just don't want to craft all of my items. Like, there's some unique weapons that you find, but just... Don't. The series, it needs to go to bed. It needs to go to bed for about 5-10 years. Because the problem is, if they release a new one within the next five years, I guarantee you they're still going to be using that same engine, which has some of the movement and physics wonkiness, and it's not upgrading well on next on next gen. So they this I, I love Far Cry. It has some fantastic games, but the series needs to go to bed five ten years, then come yeah, back to it. Definitely. Um, yeah. and then finally, the last game I've been playing, Bloodstained: Ritual of the Night, this is the kickstarted game from uh, I cannot name right now but the creator of castlevania um came out a couple of years ago jimmy hendrix um so I, I this used to be on game pass i actually tweeted how annoyed i was um i, I was annoyed when you finally want to play a game and it's no longer free on game pass or like in one of your something that you pay for um so it was still 40 bucks on xbox digital and i was like absolutely not but then I happened yeah. to be in a GameStop and they had it used for $14. And I was like, I'll pay $14 for that. So popped it in my old Xbox, installed it from the disc. And I've been playing that. I'm probably like 45 minutes into it. Uh, I watched Vinny uh, at Giant Bomb play it uh, when it came out years ago. But it's been long enough that I've forgotten everything. Uh, I'm enjoying that. Well, kind of what spurred me into that was I bought the Castlevania Advance Collection. And I was like, these are fun, but I just want a modern one of these. And uh, this is the most modern one of those. So uh, that's fun. I'll be playing that for a bit. Uh, and that's what I have been playing this week. Ian Gibson. I would like to hear your yeah, thoughts I've... about the game you've been playing. I, uh, you know, this week has been, it's been a little busy for me, but I have enough time to relax. And so I really just needed like a relaxing game um and i wanted it to be on console because i wanted to sit on my crappy couch and play on my tv and just kind of relax for a bit and so i started playing sable this is a new uh release for uh pc and xbox it may be on some other consoles as well but most importantly it's on game pass folks god bless game pass this is the game that is um the art style is basically it's it's very focused on essentially line outline of features and textures and objects and not necessarily the detail on them. So it's a lot of like blocks of color. Um, it also looks a bit like uh, Star Wars Episode One Racer in that you are essentially on like a hover bike going through the desert. Um, very beautiful game. It's just very chill. It's, it's kind of like a Zelda where you essentially are in an area and you um, you're kind of like a desert nomad. You're part of this nomadic desert tribe in like what you think is a post-apocalyptic wasteland, but it also might be a different planet. I'm not sure yet, but it's uh, it's mostly empty. There's just kind of wrecks and open desert and, and caves and stuff like that. And so you're just talking to people and your tribe is like, hey, you know, oh, I, I really like these golden beetles. Can you go get me some? So you like go over to an area, you do a little puzzle, you get some beetles, you know, you find a derelict spaceship. You got to kind mm -hmm. of puzzle through it. It's weird because as I describe this, other than the graphical style, there is nothing particularly exciting or interesting or new about this game. But just the way that it puts all of it together, like th there is no combat at all in this game. It's mostly just about exploration and adventure. Like literally the story is about how you're part of this nomadic tribe, but part of it is you have to go through the gliding, which is basically you you gain this power you get your bike, which is your hovercraft, and you, you journey out into the world to just do whatever you want. It's like literally them being like, go into the world, find out who you are, what you want to be, and then decide if you want to come back to our tribe or if you want to join a different tribe. And like, it just does it so well that like an hour, hour and a half into the game, the moment where you, you leave your tribe in the little starting area and go out into the open, they hit you with kind of that main theme and I started tearing up because it was really just this moment of just like, 
the visuals are working so well. The music is working so well. You're on this bike that you just spent like 90 minutes gathering the parts for and putting together yourself and your whole tribe is literally just like, we are proud of you. It is time for you to go into the world. And you're literally saying things like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm, I'm anxious. And, and they're like, we believe in you. Go do your gliding, discover who you are. And then you head out into the world. You head through this little archway. You got the big open desert in front of you and the music kicks in. And it's just like, Ooh, baby. <laughs> Video games are real good. <laughs> and uh, I, I, if any of that interests you at all, I highly recommend giving Sable a try. I, I've only played four or five hours of it. I'm not sure how much I'm going to play because honestly, like the platforming and the puzzles and the adventuring, it all it all feels adequate. None of it feels amazing. And it also, even on my Series X, it, it has some some issues where it'll like stutter a bit every couple seconds. So it does have some wonkiness to it. Mm -hmm. But it the aesthetic is just so good and when it nails it baby whew, it nails it video games are great so so that's that's sable like i said if any of that interests you give it a try uh it's basically ten dollars because if you don't have game pass already subscribe to game pass and play it that way there's no reason no. not to yeah nice. i remember when the trailer for it came out uh two years ago Something like that. Maybe even remember. longer. Yeah, it might, it might have even been a while. But I remember that art style just being so distinct and being like, I want to spend yeah. time in that world. Um, I We talked about it, I think, maybe like six months ago. I think we I, I brought it up or someone brought it up um, about games that we were excited about. And uh, I completely forgot about it, actually, until, until I saw it on your list. And I was like, oh, shoot, that's out. I got to play that. Yeah. Um, and I do have Game Pass, so it will be Boom. technically free for me um yeah so i'll definitely be checking that out and it just it just hearing you talk about it it kind of reminds me a little bit of like journey mixed with like some yeah. elements of no man's sky and like some other just general exploration stuff um but yeah that world just looks like somewhere i want to spend time in so i'll definitely be checking it out yeah yeah it, it just nails the vibe completely and and it's just it's there's a couple things that i came up with it one was um I'm just going to say it. This is not how I want to say it, but more games need to use licensed slash vocal music. Um, and there are plenty of games that do that already. But when I think about like Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption 2, they use them at the perfect moments and they yep. hit so well, so much better than any piece of score had. Because all of a sudden you have some lyrics to kind of bring it into it as well. That and Jose, Sable does that. The uh, Jose Gonzalez <laughs> song, I think, that hits when you yeah. go into Mexico and Red yeah. Dead 1 is like... Yes. Oh my god, it's so perfect. Exactly. And um even Maquette, the the recent puzzle game for PlayStation 5. I wasn't crazy Ooh. about the game, but it used songs like that in those moments. You know, almost these like like Tarantino-esque moments where Tarantino's like, I need a heavy song, it needs to be a freaking bop, and it needs to nail right now to amp it up to 10. And and more games need to do that. Yeah. Um because it works really well, especially with the control in your hand. It just amplifies all those feelings. Uh, a game that did that very well for me was definitely Death Stream. There were a couple oh of those gosh, moments yeah. where you were just like, you can like see yeah. the thing in the distance, you know, like this is going to be a five, 10 minute walk. And it just hit you with that song that yeah. those moments were really good. I think, I think yes. that hits, even, hits super even well. Even the, the, the walk at the end, like where the, the, I forget who sings it, but it's the woman is singing it. Like that song, it's just, it's just a you know rousing sort of emotional uh, moment that you that just stays with you. I think more so than like this is actually a problem I've had with a lot of TV shows, specifically stuff on Apple TV. I'm I'm assuming Apple has just endless amounts of usage rights because they own apple music so they can just be like we're going to use it for our stuff because we are already sort of a music licensing machine um their shows use so much licensed music at so many points in every episode of a lot of their shows that it actually i think detracts from the effectiveness of like the emotion yeah. that they're trying to convey yeah. and it got to the point with i don't know if it was i don't think it was ted lasso it might have been ted lasso but it, it might have been I think physical um, that show with Rose Byrne. I actually really like that show, but oh my gosh, it was like five or six times an episode, which was only like a thirty-minute, <laughs> you know, episode. They use songs, and I was like, yeah. I just want some original music or, or something like yeah. that. So I, I do think 
you have to be, and so far, I think the games that we brought up have been really good about this, but you do need to be careful about when and how frequently you use that. But if you get it exactly. right, oh my gosh, it's it's so good. Uh, yeah. for, uh, I haven't seen that many Apple TV plus HBQ shows, but um, <laughs> sorry, I could not remember what it was no, called. No, that's the right game. You got it. <laughs> that's yep. it. Um, I've been watching Foundation, which I've been enjoying, uh, but I feel like For All Mankind did that very well yes. because it was a historic historical show. So, like yeah. playing mm-hmm. music, like trigger those moments for you. But I, I can, do, I, I definitely actually, see that waning. I do actually think that it was in that show that I was like a bit too much, like just, <laughs> just like two or yeah. three songs yeah. too many. I was like, I noticed it too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think. Um, I, see now i'm excited to play sable because i want to have that sort of emotional yeah, me too. relationship yeah. to it cool. um, the other thing about sable um that that really impressed me is it's an open world game right and you're going around you're adventuring you're talking to people but there's no combat and you know there are plenty of games that don't have combat but there's something about sable where it just feels so like refreshing but also like revelatory to just be like i i'm adventuring and exploring but i'm not afraid of dying i'm not like oh oh what's in the cave maybe it's somebody who's gonna kill me and i'm gonna lose my stuff it's like no i'm not gonna die there's no fall damage there's no combat so it's literally just me like like having a positive emotion while i am embracing this world as opposed to one of like trepidation or like risk reward like literally the only risk reward is like do i spend 10 minutes going that direction or do i spend 10 minutes going that direction you know, and do I climb this thing because I think there's something up there or is that quote unquote wasted time, even though it doesn't really feel like it. Mm-hmm. And it just feels so good to have a game where they take the combat out, but they take the combat out so completely that it just works into that relaxing vibe and it completely changes how you view and explore and interact with this world and make decisions in it because there's not combat. And, you know, there's plenty of other games like Life is Strange, for example, that don't have combat but they still have tension in it. And in Sable, it's just like, they're like, no, this is not a tense game at all, period. There's no, there's the only conflict is just you trying to figure yourself out and what you want to do in this world. And that just feels so, so good. Just so relaxing. It's nice. <laughs> it's so weird to hear you talk positively about a video game <laughs> that <laughs> I'm like, off. I kept waiting I for the, the tell me about RimWorld while. <laughs> I kept waiting for the shoe to drop. Uh, but uh, as far as RimWorld mods, I've been really... I found this good heat mod that uh, I actually... Just... Kyle, what have you been playing? <laughs> um, surprisingly, not RimWorld. Um, Why? I just don't... I, I, I do want to play it eventually. I mean, I, I literally know nothing about it, so I, I guess We're maybe... Not... We can't do this. We can't do this. <laughs> so here, it's here's the background. Fortress. That's what you need to know. <laughs> Alright, uh, games I've been playing. I'll start with the, the my least favorite uh monster hunter world um i have decided that the monster hunter series is just not for me how let me how how far are you in it this is not questioning you this i just want to get a feel of where Um, where you made the decision let me check it's kind of second coming out he doesn't like monster i saw i saw i saw your stream (laughs) yeah and you last time i watched it you did you did the cutscene where you fight the big guy coming through the canyon. Oh, I hate it's like a yeah, big, I did, big story I did, mission. I thing. think I did two episodes after that. A mission sucks. Um, I'm at, by I'm at nine nine hours, yeah. nine point one hours of, okay. of playtime. But you played um, a decent amount. Yeah, yeah, and I I feel like I've gotten the game's core mechanics down to, to a point where I understand what I need to do if I'm not necessarily amazing at doing it. It's like I I know I can wear this monster down. I know I can trap it instead of killing it. Um, I know that it's sort of more fun to play with other people than to play by yourself. Um, I also know that the, at least for me, I, I have really good internet. I have gigabit internet. It's everything's hardwired in my house unless it doesn't need to be. Um, I have had more connectivity issues than almost any other game in the past like five years. Constantly, you will add someone to your party, even if you're friends with them on Steam and you're like linked up and ready to go. And they're on the same country server, and they'll just drop, yeah. like at, like out of nowhere, and it it ruins the playthrough because one, your friend doesn't get to continue with you, but then also, until you finish that monster off, you're in offline mode. 
So nothing else is connected. Oh, that stinks. Um, it's really, really, really stupid. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's anything on my end. I think it's just a server side issue. Uh, but whatever it is, it's infuriating. And I've been on the Monster Hunter World subreddit and a couple other forums, and a lot of other people seem to be sharing my complaints. Uh, and I just don't understand how a game this big and this popular can have such like wildly uneven online experiences. Um, but yeah, yeah. it's it, it's just it's not for me. I like the concept of it. I think I just don't like it in practice. And I said this before, they really do throw everything at you at the beginning. And it's, it's such an information dump that it's not just overwhelming, but it's sort of like disheartening because it's like, mm -hmm. I have one more thing that I have to under, that I have to understand. And I know if I go over to this person, they're going to tell me something else. And then this person will tell me something else. And it's like, I just want to fight monsters. And yeah. I, I get that there's nuances that there's, there's you could, different play styles, but I think they really need to just work on their presentation, especially to new players. Yeah. But, yeah. I think my, my issue is probably about the same. I, I just checked. I, I did 19 hours, which is actually way more than I thought I did. Um, mm. <clears throat> but I, I am the same boat as you as I just want to fight monsters with the cool weapons and stuff. I don't, yeah. And this kind of goes to where with the Far Cry Six stuff, I don't like the like the wet stone and the in the different stones and it's the different things. Annoying. Like yeah. I understand mechanics. for people who Way are into mechanics. it, that stuff is probably really cool and fun. But I want that stuff to be simplified for someone who doesn't want. It. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that's a good point. It doesn't need to be core to the gameplay experience. It needs to be like additional. Like, hey, if yeah. you want to get into this mechanical depth, you can but you don't have to. Right. I feel like that could almost ramp with difficulty. Like instead yeah. of making the monsters just have more health, it's like, Hey, we're going to make this a little bit more complex on your end where you yeah. have to manage all these different things. Um, Cause like realistically your weapon, if it's, if it's a bladed weapon, it would go dull, maybe not as fast as it does in a yeah. game, but like eventually after hitting something with scales, like it's it's not going to be as effective. So I get that. But to just throw that as because like I didn't even know about the whetstone until my friend Al, who I was playing with, like explained it to me. And I was like, I thought that was like a th th there's a little icon where the weapon is like filled up. And if it's at the if it's at the right end, then you don't need to use it. And if it's anywhere else, you eventually have to use the whetstone. I thought that that was like some other mechanic that I wasn't really paying attention to. And I was like, why is it taking so long to kill this monster? It's because of something that I probably skipped over in the in the explanation section because there was 50,000 other things that were being explained that I was like, I don't care. I just want to get through this. So I think uh, yeah. I was kind of kind of brainstorming it is, is a good way of like mitigating that is like have it be something your player ends up wanting to do because you yeah. could have you could have um, like base kits, which they kind of do have. So you could be using an axe for a while, or then you could be switching to a bow for a while, and then you would be like, hey, I wish I could use this axe with this bow, uh, like, thing, and then that's when the game's like, hey, you know you can make your own class and add this and that. Like, I feel like that's a good way to introduce complexity to, so to someone. Like, it's not there at the beginning, but it's there if you start asking those questions as a player, like, with axes. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I do, I do want to you know state that there is a reason that this game is super freaking popular um and it's because it caters to people who like that play style so this isn't a knock against people that enjoy that i think just for me personally and you know a de i think a decent number of people would appreciate these types of changes but they're obviously doing just fine so yeah it's you know, i'm mm -hmm. i'm i'm okay to just admit it's not for me it's not that the game's bad. It's just not my thing. So it's also um, the most accessible that series has ever been. That's, I, that's the other thing. And Ian, Ian and I talked about this a while ago, uh, but <clears throat> Monster Hunter World 2 is probably one I will buy day one. Be like, I'm ready yeah. for this. Like, I liked World 1 enough to know that I enjoyed it. And unless there's some horrible thing that comes out in a review pre-release, like, I think I'm a day one person getting into that game. And so I have the people to play with, you know? Yeah, I do. I do also think, you know, spending more time in in the world, at least this one, um, it, it will sort of like once you once you get to know all the mechanics, 
and you don't have to think about them. Like, obviously, that's when games become as accessible as possible. It's just getting over that hump at the beginning. So I think if I spent maybe 10 more hours or 20 more hours, it's just like, I don't want to. Like, I yeah. really, I just, I, I was doing the last stream <laughs> I did. I was like, I was literally like hunched over like this, just on my controller. Being like, <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, and it, it, you know, just with that combined with the connection issues, I was not having a good time. Um, but yeah, that's Monster Hunter World. Um, and then second game that I played, I didn't play that many games, but I got Mass Effect, the Legendary Edition. Uh, I had previously beaten, I think two weeks ago, Mass Effect 1 in the Legendary Edition. So I'm now on to Mass Effect 2. Love it. Um, I do completely understand, Ian, what you were feeling. And we, we talked about this before because we were trying to figure out why you were feeling like they just kept giving you stuff. And they yeah. really just do get like it, it's it's all the DLC. So it's just sort of it comes like bam, 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 bam. Here's the Firewalker stuff. Here's the Overlord stuff. Here's I just I just got I finished getting the first three or four characters that you need to get. And then you talk to the elusive man. And then immediately after Admiral Hackett's like, oh, I need to talk to you. And he's like. <laughs> uh, the arrival DLC is here, <laughs> so um, it it definitely is like oh my gosh, this is just so much stuff. And I think having it doled out piecemeal, like you beat the the base game when it originally came out, and then you know three months later they had the Firewalker DLC. Three months after that they had Overlord, and then three months after that they had Arrival, um, or and like the Kasumi stuff and everything. I think that was sort of the ideal way of experiencing it, rather than just having everything sort of balled together uh but it's still really good it runs it's like rock solid on my computer it runs so well yeah um i do and this is a gripe i don't remember having with number two the cover system is real wonky like mm, really yeah. really wonky and i don't remember yeah. it being as bad as it is because there's times where you'll be like you run up to cover and you move to the side to like get into the, the shooting position and it'll just like, wah, like move your character back <laughs> and then like snap back. And it's like, you can't, and that happens yeah. like so many times. And even when you're shooting, sometimes you just like, will get unlocked and it's like, Oh, well, why am I not behind cover? And then all of a sudden you're getting hit with like from every angle and it's, and then you're dead. Um, so I, I just don't remember it being that bad when I first played it, I think on like the 360 or something. Um, so I don't know if it was something that they did or maybe maybe it just was bad and I forgot about it. But man, is it wonky? It's real. It was real weird. But other than that, I've been having a really good time. Thanks. Your um, your DLC thing makes me think about every time I go back to either Fallout 3 or New Vegas, you like start the game up. And as soon as you leave the starting area, you just like, you get a radio signal from the West. You get a radio <laughs> signal from Pittsburgh. Oh, you get yeah. a radio signal from, like in quick succession, but it's not Jeez. like a menus you can button through. It's like every five seconds you're walking. It does a new one. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, uh, I, I keep contemplating if I need to replay those games and, and finish play three, but I don't know, maybe someday. I, I don't, I don't have the time right now. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, it's a lot, but yeah, totally. Uh, speaking of time, it is time for the news, which means we got to play the news theme. Just something I'm gonna do right now. I'm not. I'm not gonna turn the volume up. I'm gonna do it. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? I really got to just use stuff. that faded version of the intro song so I don't have to turn it down manually like a <laughs> like a horrible person. Like a Stupid. chump. Mm -hmm. Chump, that's the word. I literally could not. Th I couldn't think of <laughs> ROM hack the other day. I was like trying to think of the word to Wait, describe is... it. It's ROM like hack? ROM oh, hack. ROM, ROM, ROM hack. hack. Okay. Why is all the ROM hack gone? Um, I was trying to describe a Mario ROM hack and I kept being like mod glitch. And I, after the meeting, I messaged the person on Slack and all caps, ROM hack. <laughs> like, that's what it was. Um, Too late, Will, you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone laughed at you. Um, like not much news this week, uh, which is a good thing because we spent a, quite a while talking about video games we've been playing. Um, 
is there anything like none of this is crazy is there anything that jumps out at anyone wants to talk i figure we steer the discussion where it wants to go um, um i I have, I have a good one i have kind of a kind of a brain exercise in a way um so epic is they're thinking about making a Fortnite movie as they launch an entertainment division um you know look let's put it this way epic stole Fortnite from PUBG. And then they stole the imposter mode from Among Us. So what movie are they going to steal <laughs> from for the Fortnite movie? Chris Pratt. <laughs> Jumanji? The, the Mario movie from Nintendo. Ooh. Um, Jumanji's good. It's like a kid who plays Fortnite on his phone and he gets sucked into the phone. Yeah, not his iOS then, phone. It's his Android phone. <laughs> and, and then he plays with like rick like like rick from rick and morty like all the, all like chun Li is there and like the so rock like Player also one. plays fortnite so the rock got sucked in yeah. too but or it's like, actually uh, the rock a kid in king arthur's court i think is is the yeah movie. and brie Last larson's there and yeah. who are other famous gamers oh uh superman clark kent what's his name zelda williams zelda williams yeah yeah, yeah. Now, okay. you can, now, now you can have free guy which by the way i went to new york comic-con uh over the weekend so many free guy cosplayers like uh, we saw, i heard it wasn't we saw, that, i've heard it wasn't that bad of a movie so i kind of want to it was watch good it now. i i liked it it was i mean it's not like the greatest thing ever but it was way yeah. better than it had any right to be forgot to say i i went to a smash brothers tournament over the weekend nice uh yeah we, how'd you do excuse me excuse me excuse me we need to talk about this real quick because will has said to me several times that he is so good at smash that quote i'm pretty sure i would win like a smash brothers tournament so uh, how'd you do buddy first of all how'd you do i did pretty well um Thank you. i i first round and first round i went up to the guy who came second and, and i got him down two lives i almost almost beat him and then losers bracket uh i just decided to play a random character and i i, I lost uh also also i totally forgot you invited me to this and i never no that's i said, I, 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 I asked you, you what the anyways. address was for and i i was like what's the address and i meant to say oh I'm not going to be there because I'm going to New York Comic Con, but I just never replied because that's yeah, okay. I cried. It's, it's you, so cried for weeks. <laughs> uh, no, I saw your. I think you tweeted or something. You wrote it somewhere else. No, where did you say? Oh, you said it to the movie night thing. That's why I knew you were going to Comic Con, and I, yes, that's why I knew you weren't going to be there. Um, but I will say, Ian, that uh, I am very good at Smash Brothers in the general sense of better than the average person um i don't know smash is one of those games where people think they're always better and then they turn out to not be that good um, <laughs> there's there's a uh docuseries on youtube that's from like mid 2000s talking about the top smash brothers players and i will never forget one of i forget what his name was um but one of the one of the top players was like explaining like the the culture of smash and what it is to him and he was just like smash is smash is jazz man it's smash is jazz <laughs> so i just always think smash is jazz whenever anyone smash is jazz <laughs> it, it was cool though because the cool thing about it was seeing people's moves and then seeing people i know who know smash really well being like you can do that with that character um like the the fact that those moments still happen with ultimate is, is really cool uh and so yeah, now, that's uh that was gonna be my question so you were playing ultimate yeah playing ultimate with and, all the characters who's your Sora. who's oh, your main uh, i main zelda or zelda link <laughs> link <laughs> um wow i can't believe i just Bro. did that um i used to main Wait, Falcon, which link which link? Uh, uh, adult regular link um okay. that's who i played as a kid and then i switched to captain falcon for a while and then i just went back to link because i like i like his sword play um so i've been i was playing as him and he's the one i almost got two people down with and then for the loser's bracket i was like oh let me try captain falcon again and that's i just got my butt kicked um in the loser's bracket. i almost went up to, against the same guy in the loser's bracket again i was gonna be so mad um i i think i would have made it probably another one or two rounds if um if i hadn't fought that guy in the first round but uh 
it was it was fun it was fun trying to stay alive against him uh he was playing mm -hmm. a mewtwo who was really good and could make you fall asleep and it was really any fun. anyone who plays mr game and watch it's like if they're good you've automatically lost mr game yeah. and watch is like yeah. so ridiculous uh, the the guy made it third and the guy who came second played samus mm. and then the guy really? who came samus. first played shulk and he he was oh, like he I was like, like shulk. shulk is the only character i'm good at he was like if we yeah. did random characters in this tournament uh i would have been screwed i always uh, do marth and fox i like fox ooh. a lot and then i used to be actually yeah sable sable's or well um was it sable what did we just sabrina. say sabrina sabrina yeah sabrina the teenage witch she's great <laughs> it's crazy um, drop isabel yeah Isabel, I can't remember. Lu uh, Lucina, Lu Lu Lucina, Lu Lucina. Yeah, Lu yeah. The, the, the fire. I don't know why I couldn't think of her name. Um, she, all the Fire Emblem characters. Like I really, maybe it's just because I'm a big fan of that series. Yeah, I wish there were more. I, I, they play really well. Yeah. Shut up, bro. <laughs> I wish Master Hand was the Final Smash character. It would have been good. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I just totally forgot to bring that up because it was genuinely a real super fun night. I set up my N64 uh, with this old projector I have from Karen. And I just had that going on in the background with 99 stock fights of four characters at all at level nine. So I was just like checking awesome. in on that throughout it, uh, which made me realize I should use that projector to just project crap behind me at the studio. Uh, mm -hmm. like uh, anyways, like feces. Yeah, like feces and stuff. <laughs> or just <scat. laughs> soft core porn. <laughs> <laughs> or live scat. Uh, <laughs> oh, that'd be really funny to be like scat festival and like uh, go, go either way. Two, on that, and then the two actual, very different groups show <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> uh oh, and and then surprise, you cater to both. Um, and there's one guy. You can make a make a poster where it's like it, it depending on what scat you're thinking fest. of. It looks like one thing. It's like the the always sunny bicep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought they were penises, dude. <laughs> um, anyways, Epic Moles Fortnite. I I was trying to think of other movies. I think your Jumanji one's pretty good. I think yeah. Jumanji modernized. Which, by the way, that new that f I haven't seen the second one, but that first new Jumanji movie was actually so pretty good. good. So good. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. I watched it on an airplane. Uh, coming so back. That's a good airplane movie. Yeah, it was a good airplane movie. I also watched Death of Stalin on that flight as well. <gasps> I've <laughs> heard good things about that. I that's a good, seen it. that's a good movie. Um, what was I? What did I? Oh, Ian, I thought this was actually exciting uh, and made me want to play it again. But the final for final fantasy, final fantasy, final fantasy mm. fourteen surpassed twenty four million players. Uh, I didn't read the article. Was that twenty four total million players? I believe. Yeah, I believe it's twenty four million total registered players. It's become the most profitable Final Fantasy game in the entire series. That's crazy. And folks, it has earned it. It is a fantastic MMO. It has a great trial, basically up to level 60 with a couple of restrictions, but none of them really hampering you from enjoying the game for 100 plus hours. So it's, just, it's as, game. just as someone who's never, I've never, ever touched this game. This is the game that basically on launch, they were like, we need to redo this. <laughs> yeah yeah it launched totally. in a bad state so they they kind of reworked those first 50 50 levels redid a lot of that content and then have just been banging it out with some great that's, stuff afterwards that's great that, i mean that's super cool great game fantastic play it. yeah okay and it's free and i i paid i paid i played i need to check probably 40 hours and i never paid a cent oh so, wow pretty good um I thought this was interesting, uh, mostly because uh, I feel like this is the first of many games to do this, but it just happened to be this one it was announced with. Dragon Age 4 uh, is supposedly only heading to the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, uh, and I assume PC, uh, without cross-gen releases. Um, good. Start moving good. forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, was it, this was in the... Um, game show but wasn't shadow of mordor the one of the last big ones that did 360 it was and yeah ps3 and xbox one but it was also um 
uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag that did it as yeah, well. That's I what I, that was a that launch had the title as well. As well. Um, yeah. Gotcha. That's a good game. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's cool. Uh, I, I'm glad. I mean, it's obviously where we're heading to. And Dragon Age 4. I've never played any Dragon Age games. I've tried multiple times, but... I tried Inquisition, and I got like 15 hours into it, and I just put it down and stopped. And I don't... I think I enjoyed it. I just... It didn't have anything that made me... It was the same exact thing that happened with um, uh, The Outer Worlds. Where I was like, I liked yeah. it up to a point, and then I was like, I just don't care about this anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep... I keep meaning to go back to Outer Worlds... I only stopped playing it because Karen was so into it and she was playing it so much that I was like, I'm going to wait to play it. Um, but I don't think it's been long. I still like remember the beginning so well, so I think I got to gotta wait a little bit longer. Um, um, can we talk about this System Shock live action series? Which yes, we can. Sounds yeah. cool. Um, I, I, I'm interested for sure. Yeah, but you know what? I just realized, okay, so System Shock will, correct me if I'm wrong, the premise of System Shock is that a space station has gone dark, and you need to go onto the space station, and there's creepy horror things happening on the space station, you don't know what happened to your coworkers, and there's also an evil computer AI. Folks, I, I'm not saying it's going to be a bad TV show, but I feel like that's been done and done and done and done. I think that's one of those where it's a overplayed concept in movies and tvs that's turned into a very good video game and i think going backwards is not nearly as unique so i don't know i i yeah. feel like it's funny that we not to interrupt um no, it's, it's funny that we have the shenmue anime series which is another topic that we have yeah i i think this would work better as an animated series <laughs> like system yeah. shock animated i think could be really sick that could um, be good i just don't yeah. i don't i don't get why it has to be live action I, yeah, I just, I didn't even think about it until we started talking about it. But yeah, it's, there's nothing unique about System Shock, the TV show, because that premise has been done a bajillion times. Yeah. So I, I, it's hard for me, even if it was incredibly well done, I'd be like, cool, add it to the list. We got Solera, we got, you know, all bunch of other movies that are just like that, that are good. So, you know, I don't know. What do you uh, think, Will? You're the one that that is all like, I love System Shock almost as much as Seinfeld and RimWorld. I've never played System Shock. I don't know anything about System Shock. Um, you played System Shock 2. I played System Shock 2. That's not System Shock, is it, sir? It's basically the same thing. It's basically the same absolutely thing. not the same thing. System is Shock it, 2. Is the premise identical? I have no idea. I've never played System Shock 1. But System Shock <laughs> 2 is. is an absolutely incredible game that would make a fantastic TV show because it takes exactly what you've been talking about and turns it on his head. But uh, they're doing apparently the first game, so I have no idea. Maybe it'll be good. Uh, who cares? System Shock 2 is a better game. And it still holds up. Played it last year, two years ago. Last year. When was the whole COVID thing still happening? Um, last year? Last year. And it's still I, happening. I already want to, now I want to play that game again. That game is still terrifying and super fun. Oh, System Shock 2, I highly recommend it for anyone who's never played it. Good uh, stuff. Really good. Uh, man, it does this cool thing with the chemicals, and you got to go back to different levels. It's like Bioshock, but better. Um... <laughs> better design um anything else you guys want to talk about or should we uh hit the road jack um you know Sh kyle already talked about shenmue the anime series i've never played shenmue but i watched a full shenmue playthrough from giant bomb and uh i think it actually would translate pretty well to an animated series and i believe they also um had some images and i do like that art style there's basically a minute 14 teaser trailer oh I and didn't I'm going to look it up. Yeah, if you just click through that link that's on there, it's it's got a nice art style to it. The Shenmue story is actually kind of cool. Um, I'm excited for it. This is a way for me to consume Shenmue without having to play the games because the games are a little bit old. and It does look good. It, I mean, it looks like sort of classic anime. Yeah. Style. So I'm ready I for could, it. I could dig it. Um, yeah. There's also, this has nothing to do with Shenmue, but I'm pretty excited for the new uh 
Blade Runner animated series. Oh, Black series. Lotus. Wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pumped. Oh, I hadn't even heard about that. Yeah, I think it's also on Adult Swim because they there was there was like a there was a news story that they hired two people to keep the Blade Runner universe in order. Oh, like, yeah. Like with all the new stuff that's oh. coming out, I was like, you don't really have that many things to worry about. <laughs> like you've got two movies. And like the little animated prequels that they did before Blade Runner 2049 came out. Kyle, I think you're forgetting about the Disney Star Wars situation where they did not have anybody <laughs> doing that. But so. I, but I also I also don't think that Blade Runner is like I don't think they're producing Blade Runner content on the level that Disney is producing Star Wars content. That's true. Yeah. But to your point, you are absolutely right. So I'm not angry about it. I just thought it was funny. Cool. Sorry, I'm busy looking up Stock Two. Oh, I want to play it again. It's so I think, good. I think, I think that's it. I don't it's see so anything good. else on here that we. Folks, time to get out of here. It's time to play music. It's time to touch ourselves, silly folks. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight, or in your ear holes, or on the YouTube eyes later. But we have had fun uh, doing this. I'm completely sober, which is crazy. Uh, I have tomorrow off, which is exciting uh, because um, who knows why? Um, we have a lot of things going on though. Uh, Saturday night, we'll be playing some Back for Blood. Uh, or as I heard it called in my Slack channel, Returning for Hemoglobin. Uh, which I thought was pretty good. Um, so we'll be playing that 9 p.m. Eastern on the Saturday. Uh, so tune in for that. Also, next Tuesday is probably something else we're doing and even more in the future. But I know next Thursday, you can come right back here. Same time, same place. And we will be shouting and scatting and doobly dooping about the news and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, the good kind of scat. Uh, hashtag good scat. <laughs> <laughs> go, go make that trend uh, Ian Gibson was here today and Kyle Bailey thank you too so much for joining me um, you know I, I couldn't do it without you couldn't do it without RimWorld couldn't do it without System Shock 2 some of the best games ever created by man or woman um, this song's almost over I just need it just need a little bit more just, we should add a scat track to this sub, sub, hashtag subpixel scat <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching and we will see you next week.